Have you ever considered the transformative power of forgiveness, especially in the most unthinkable situations? It's a question that might strike a chord, especially when it's linked to an event so deeply tragic and heart-wrenching, the loss of a child, to an act of senseless violence. We're about to delve into a topic today that's as difficult as it is important. It's about the journey of parents who find themselves in the unthinkable position of having to confront the murderer of their child. It's about the pain, the anger, the sorrow, and the overwhelming sense of loss that comes crashing down like a tidal wave. But it's also about something else. It's about a potential path to healing that some might find impossible or even absurd. It's about the power of forgiveness. Yes, you heard right, forgiveness. Now let's be clear. This is not about condoning the act or forgetting the pain nor is it about providing an easy escape route for the perpetrator. This is about the survivors, the parents, the siblings, the family and friends who are left behind in the wake of such an atrocity. It's about how forgiveness in its most profound sense can serve as a lifeline, a beacon of light in the darkest of times. It's about how forgiving can help us move forward, not because the act is forgotten, but because we refuse to let it define us or consume us. In this journey, we'll explore the complexities of grief the struggle to cope, and the unexpected outcomes that can emerge from choosing to forgive. This is not a journey that anyone would willingly choose. But it's a journey that, for some, becomes the only way forward. It's a journey of resilience, of strength, and ultimately, of love. So, we invite you to join us as we explore this path less traveled. It's a journey that promises to challenge, to provoke, and perhaps, to inspire. Can forgiveness heal the deepest wounds? Let's explore. The unthinkable happens every day. Children, the most innocent among us, become victims of the most heinous crimes. Even though we wish it weren't true, the harsh reality is that child murder is a grim part of our world. Let's talk about the numbers. The World Health Organization has reported that in a year, thousands of children under the age of 15 are victims of homicide globally. The most affected are often in the age group of infants to four-year-olds. Heartbreakingly, the perpetrators are often those who should be their protectors, their parents, or caregivers. These numbers are more than just statistics. They represent real children, real lives cut short, real families shattered. They represent a reality we must face and address. A family is like a beautifully woven fabric, each thread representing a member, each thread contributing to the overall strength of the fabric. When one thread is abruptly and violently cut, the fabric weakens and the remaining threads are left to bear the strain. The emotional devastation of losing a child to murder is immeasurable. It's like a dark cloud that descends, casting a chilling shadow over the family. It's a storm that threatens to drown them in a sea of grief, anger, and despair. Parents experience a profound sense of loss that is beyond comprehension. It's an unnatural order of events. No parent should have to bury their child. They grapple with guilt, constantly questioning what they could have done differently, what signs they missed. They battle with anger, a burning rage against the person who tore their world apart. They wrestle with despair, a feeling of hopelessness that the sun will never shine on their family again. Siblings too are deeply affected. They lose not just a brother or sister, but a playmate, a confidant, a part of their innocence. They are suddenly thrust into an adult world of grief and loss, their childhood abruptly interrupted. The family unit, once a haven of love and safety, can become a battlefield of emotions. Relationships can become strained, communication can break down, and the family can be torn apart. In the face of such a tragedy, it's important to remember that it's okay to grieve, to feel the pain, the anger, the despair. These emotions are a testament to the love you had for your child, and it's only natural that their loss would leave such a deep wound. The loss of a child to murder is a pain beyond words. It's a wound that never fully heals. But as we move forward, we need to find ways to manage this pain, to live with it, and to ensure that it does not consume us. Because at the end of the day, our love for our lost child, and our love for those who remain, is stronger than any darkness that may try to engulf us. When a family is struck by such a tragedy, it can tear them apart. This isn't just a line in a script, it's a stark reality for many who have lost a child to murder. The grief that follows is like an unwelcome guest that refuses to leave. It's a constant companion and a reminder of the precious life that was taken away too soon. The anger that bubbles up is like a volcano, ready to explode at any moment. 
It's directed at the murderer, at the world, and sometimes even at themselves. Parents may find themselves questioning if they could have done something different, if they could have protected their child better. This self-blame can be a destructive force, eating away at their self-worth and confidence. Depression often follows in the wake of such a loss. It's like a heavy fog, clouding everything with its pervasive gloom. It drains the joy out of life, making every day a struggle. The world seems dull and colorless, and even the simplest tasks can feel like climbing a mountain. The bonds that hold a family together can strain under the weight of this grief, anger, and depression. Parents might distance themselves from each other, each trapped in their own world of pain. Siblings may feel neglected and confused, unsure of how to navigate through the sea of sorrow that has engulfed their family. One of the most devastating impacts is the feeling of helplessness. The realization that they couldn't prevent their child's death can leave parents feeling powerless and defeated. This can lead to a loss of faith, not just in themselves but in the world around them. But it's important to remember that it's okay to grieve, it's okay to feel angry, to feel depressed. These feelings are a part of the healing process, and acknowledging them is the first step towards recovery. The pain of losing a child to murder is a heavy burden that can break even the strongest. But it's also a burden that can be shared, a pain that can be managed. And in the midst of this darkness, there is always a sliver of light, a hope for a better tomorrow. Grief is a journey, not a destination. It's okay to grieve, and it's okay to hurt. In the face of such tragedy, the unthinkable loss of a child, it's understandable to feel as though the world has stopped spinning. It's natural to feel like you're spiraling into an abyss of sorrow with no light in sight. Let's not sugarcoat it. This is a devastating blow that can shatter a family. The first step in coping with this unimaginable loss is to acknowledge the pain. You're not expected to be okay. You're not expected to put on a brave face. It's okay to cry. It's okay to scream. It's okay to feel angry, confused, and lost. Your feelings are valid, and they need to be expressed. In this journey of grief, it's crucial to seek help when you need it. You're not alone in this, even though it may feel like it. Reach out to your friends, your family, or a professional counselor. It's okay to lean on others for support. It's okay to ask for help. Remember, everyone copes with grief differently. There's no right or wrong way to grieve. Don't let anyone tell you how you should feel or how you should cope. This is your journey and you get to decide how you navigate it. It's also important to take care of yourself. Yes, the world feels like it's crumbling around you, but your well-being matters. Try to eat healthily, get some sleep, and engage in activities you enjoy when you feel up to it. Exercise can be beneficial too. It releases endorphins, chemicals in your brain that act as natural painkillers and mood elevators. Don't rush the healing process. Grief has its own timeline. It's not linear and there's no set time frame for when you should start feeling better. Some days will be better than others, and that's okay. One of the most challenging aspects of grief is the guilt. You may find yourself thinking, if only I had done this, or if only I hadn't done that. It's crucial to remember that you did the best you could with the information you had at the time. You loved your child, and that's what matters. Remember, it's okay to laugh. It's okay to find moments of joy amidst the sorrow. It doesn't mean you're forgetting your child or dishonoring their memory. It just means you're human and you're trying to survive. Lastly, remember that it's okay to remember. Cherish the memories of your child. Talk about them, laugh about them, cry about them, keep their memory alive. The pain may never go away, but you can learn to live with it. It's a daunting task indeed, but remember, you're stronger than you think. You've survived every tough day so far and you will survive this too. You're not alone and it's okay to seek help. And above all, it's okay to grieve. Holding on to hatred can consume you. But what if there's another way? We're venturing into a challenging territory here, folks. The idea of forgiving someone who has caused you immeasurable pain might seem impossible, even unthinkable. Yet some people have found that this very act can lead to a form of healing. Let's be clear here. Forgiveness is not about excusing the act or absolving the person of their crime. It's not about denying the pain or pretending that everything is okay. Instead, it's about releasing the hold that this pain has on you, about choosing to no longer let it define your life. Imagine a life dominated by hatred. It's like being in a constant state of war with your heart as the battlefield. The energy it takes to maintain that level of anger can be exhausting, 
draining you of the joy and love that life has to offer. On the other hand, forgiveness can be like a balm. It doesn't erase the pain or bring back what was lost, but it can soothe the raw, festering wounds of your heart. It can give you a sense of peace, a feeling of liberation from the chains of anger and hatred. Research supports this too. Studies have shown that forgiveness can have profound effects on mental and emotional health. It can reduce stress, lower blood pressure, and improve sleep. It can lead to fewer symptoms of depression and anxiety, and it can boost self-esteem. Parents who have gone through this unimaginable ordeal and chosen the path of forgiveness often report a sense of release. It's as if a heavy burden has been lifted off their shoulders. They find that instead of being consumed by rage, they are able to focus on cherishing the memories of their child and honoring their life. But how does one even begin to forgive such a horrific act? It's a personal journey and there's no one-size-fits-all answer. It may start with acknowledging your pain, your anger, your loss. It may involve seeking professional help, joining a support group, or turning to spiritual practices. It may take time, patience, and a whole lot of courage. Remember, forgiveness is not a destination, but a journey. It's not a one-time act, but a process. It's okay if you're not ready to forgive today, tomorrow, or even a year from now. What's important is that you're open to the possibility, that you're willing to consider it. In the end, forgiveness isn't about the person who wronged you. It's about you. It's about giving yourself permission to heal, to move forward, to not let your life be defined by your loss. Forgiveness is not about forgetting. It's about freeing your heart from the shackles of hatred. It's about choosing love over hate, peace over turmoil, and hope over despair. It's about reclaiming your life for yourself and for the memory of your child. Forgiveness is a journey just like grief, and it's a journey worth considering. As we wrap up this discussion, let's revisit the key points we've covered. We began by acknowledging the harsh reality that some parents face, the unthinkable loss of a child. We delved into the emotional turmoil this causes, the heartache that tears families apart, and the enduring pain that lingers. We then transitioned into the importance of coping mechanisms. We emphasize that it's okay to grieve, that it's natural and necessary. We acknowledge that the pain will always be there, but we can learn to live with it, manage it, and continue to find joy in life. The crux of our discussion was the transformative power of forgiveness. We explored how this act, challenging as it may be, can provide a pathway to healing. By releasing the hatred and resentment that so easily consumes us, we make room for love, peace, and forward movement in our lives. Forgiving the person who caused such profound pain might seem impossible. It might feel like betrayal to the memory of your child. But remember, forgiveness is not about absolving the perpetrator of their actions. Rather, it's about freeing yourself from the shackles of hatred and bitterness that inhibit your healing and growth. It's important to consider that forgiveness is not a one-time act. It's a process, a journey that you embark on, just like grief. It may take time, and that's okay. It's not about forgetting, but about finding a way to remember without the pain overshadowing everything else. In the end, it's about finding light in the darkest of places, about transforming sorrow into strength, and about reclaiming your life. It's about understanding that while we can't control the actions of others, we can control our response to them, and in that control lies our power. If you found this video helpful, please share it with someone who might need it. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more educational content.